Hi right, guys, before I get started on this transmission, just going to give you a quick update where we're at with the engine. Uh, the engine is at the machine shop. It does look like we are going to be able to redo that and get it going. There may be one cylinder that needs to be sleeved. The crank looks like it's going to have to be turned. But my thinking on that is the 230 engine, to go find one that's running, you know, by the time you pay for it, you're probably going to still have to tear it down, rebuild it. So I'm just going to go ahead and do do the one that I have already. Um, I think it would just kind of be neat to do, you know, bring something that's in that bad of shape back to life. But he is busy. It's probably going to be another month or two from this point before I get it back. Um, but that's okay because I have plenty of work. So today's goal is with this transmission to get it cleaned up and um, I'm not going to say to rebuild it or nothing but I would like to kind of take a peek inside make sure it's not <laughs> full of water like the motor was if you didn't see that look uh, I think it's uh, part two where I tore the motor down full of water I highly doubt that this is because it's a sealed unit plus it's under the truck but you never know. I didn't even open it up. I don't know if there's oil in it yet. Um, if it was drained out, I have no idea. So to get this cleaned up, what I was doing is I took uh, engine degreaser because this thing has what? It's a uh, 50 through. In fact, I even cleaned up just a little bit of the spots for the dates and it's actually dated uh, September of 1952. So it's 70-some years old. So that oil, the dirt, everything is so caked on there. It was it was terrible to even try to to just scrape off the dirt. I mean, it would take forever. So I soaked it down there the next couple last couple of days. I'd come out, soak it down with the engine cleaner, and uh, hopefully today it'll it'll scrape up quite a bit easier. Hopefully. All right, I cheated a little bit, took it out, power washed it up. Um, got it propped up here, bucket below. I'm gonna go ahead and pull off this drain plug if it cooperates with me. And hopefully there's no water in it. You see it's righty tighty lefty loosey, right? And she's gonna be tight. We got her on there tight. Tight, I say. And the fact that she's rocking around ain't helping me, though. There's my little ball peen. Or mallet. Maybe a little shock. Well, you didn't see that, did you? Hopefully there ain't no damage. Hopefully there ain't no damage. Such is life sometimes. A little bit of damage to the knuckles, though. Well, now. You still with me? What are you looking at? I bet we do a take two on this. Cut it out. You would never know what happened. How many of you guys saw that coming? Yelling at me. <laughs> I guess I should have saw it coming, huh? Oh well. Doesn't appear anything broke. No harm, no foul. Get her up over the lip.
All right, now let's see what comes out of it. Now, there's oil in it, no water, so that's a good sign. Looks like original oil. Yeah, a little bit of sludge pouring out. But she seems pretty sludgy, but at least at least it does have oil in it. So that's good at least. Alright. Wasn't much in there. I don't know how much it's supposed to take. Probably don't take a whole lot anyway. Definitely have to clean the inside out, pop the top off. We'll run some uh, cleaner down through it. And now, let me set it back so I don't do it again. I don't think I need to drop it again. I think I really dodged a bullet dropping that one. Wasn't the brightest thing I did. But, hey, at least he's all right. I don't see no signs of any damage at all. All right, uh, I'm gonna get a reposition and we'll uh, get her a little bit more secured so she don't fall off the table again. And uh, go ahead with uh, taking the, taking the uh, top off of it and uh, checking out the gears and then the, I can't even talk now. Checking out the gears and the teeth on the gears on the inside. All right, I'll bring you back. All right, all I did was I just removed the six bolts holding the uh, the top on it. Um, I haven't taken it off yet, so let's get it off, take a peek inside, see what we have. I don't know if this is going to be, yep, it's going to be easy. Next step is I'm going to go ahead and take this um, brake support off. I already took the, I guess you call it the drum with the band around it. I already took that off earlier off camera. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this off. Then we got to pull this main shaft forward a little bit um, to get to the bearing. Then we'll pull the bearing off. And then the rest of this shaft should lift up, up through the main cavity here. So far, I don't see any teeth. I mean, I'm just glancing in there, but I don't see any teeth broken. I do see a couple. I don't know if they're cut that way or not. All right, that'll just slide off. All right, a half inch socket. Everything, I didn't pre loosen these, but they seem to be pretty loose. I don't know. If that somebody's been in here at one point and left them loose, or are they out of the factory, I don't know. Now, I'm not sure. Looks all right, Lord. It's got that burnt smell to it, burnt oil.
slippery. Supposedly, it's supposed to fit out here somehow. I don't know if it's a little. There we go. I got her. And there's needle bearings up there. I think I just dropped one. So, what I'm going to do is put this back on there. This is actually going to be the fun part when you uh, when I go to assemble it because I have to put all of those back in there, pack it with a little bit of light grease, and uh, insert that shaft into it. That's going to be fun. I got a little bit ahead of myself earlier when I went to remove the input shaft. I forgot that I actually have to drop the uh, gear set on the counter shaft below to clear the gears here and uh, allow me to pull it out and in order to do that i just need to remove this nut right here and this is just a retainer plate that fits into a slot on the shaft that keeps it from moving the manual says that there should be no more than i think 15 thousandths movement maybe 14 thousandths movement i'll have to double check that so what I'm going to do is before I tear this apart and to get a, a baseline where we're at is I'm just going to use a feeler gauge and just measure the gap between the gear, the gear right here and the casing. So and we'll get an idea where we're at. As long as that's good, I'm just going to use the old shims in it. I mentioned, I think earlier about the uh, parts kit that has shims if you need them. But anyway... I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to find a wooden dowel the same size that I can knock that through. So there's the shaft, it is out, looks to be in pretty good shape, no problems with it. Um, now that whole gear set just dropped right down in there. Now. Hopefully, the shaft will come out. Might take a little persuasion with a rubber mount. Yeah, it's starting to come now. And there's our main input shaft. She don't look to be too bad. So everything, I don't see any teeth miss, missing on anything. I, I haven't at this point. So I'm just going to roll with it. To get this bearing off, there's actually a nut here with a spanner wrench you got to take off. But I'm this far. Might as well go ahead and replace it. And then last... Got to get these shims out. 
It gets a little fiddly. And all the needle bearings in here are going to fall out. And probably what I should have done was uh, shorten that wood rod up and left it in here and it would have kept them all but they're all getting replaced anyway so I'm not going to worry about it. Another metal shim and your copper or brass whatever it is but they do look to be wore down because uh, the filler gauge I put the filler gauge on it the max um, allowable was 15 a 20,000 filler gauge would actually go through there so no doubt that was bad. All right, and we'll get cleaned up. Um, everything in the casing looks good. Nothing looks like it broke as a result of my little oops earlier. So um, I'll get everything cleaned up and get the parts and start putting her back together. Okay, it's been about a month now. Um, I did order a small parts kit for the transmission. I did receive it in. However, the problem is it is the wrong one. And it's not going to do me any good at all. The needle bearings are about a quarter inch shorter than the originals. Um, apparently this is for a car, not the pickup truck. There is a difference. I contacted Andy, Andy Birnbaum at MoparParts.com. I think it is. Old MoparParts.com. And um, I was informed that they don't even know of anybody who makes the small parts kit for a pickup truck. So... I'm kind of stuck using what I already have, even though it's not in the best condition. You look on some of these needle bearings here, you can see the ends are a little bit damaged. The shaft that they ride around, it's got some damage to it. I hit it with a little emery cloth, you know, any sharp edges, whatever, try to get it off. But, you know, it's just going to be what it's going to be. The end play in it, because of the thrust, uh, washers there a little bit worn. I think the max end play was 15 thousandths of an inch I stuck a 20 thousandths uh, filler gauge down in the end. It probably had another two thousandths I could have done but again, it is what it is I've even thought about maybe putting a little spacer washer in between um, maybe take up About eight thousandths of it. In fact, I even thought about using one of the new ones, but it is a little bit smaller, so I don't know what I'm going to do with that. A couple of these parts here you can find on eBay. The shaft I can find. Um, even the gear set I can find, but I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But the small parts kit, out of luck. And that's kind of what you need. So I'm going to go ahead and reassemble it. So I kind of have it laid out the way it goes. This sleeve will go, spacer will go over the shaft. Then you have your needle bearings. That'll ride around the shaft here, and then you have your thrust washers on the end, and uh, the shaft and all slides through the gear set here. So that's going to be a little bit fun, a little bit challenging to get all this to stay in. Um, again, I made up a little wood dowel, which will act as the shaft temporarily. It's the same length as the gear set, so all everything will be assembled that way. And then I'm going to have to set it in through here. And the reason you can't put the shaft in is because you have to drive the shaft in through the rear end. You can't just put it in and drop it down. But it is a little bit of a tight space here. So I don't know how well I'm going to be able to film it. Hopefully it comes out okay. Um, but I won't get started on it and uh, we'll see what happens. All right, so what I'm going to do is attempt to uh, get these pins in here. I'm going to use a little bit of grease and then just stick them all down in here.
hopefully that grease will hold them in, in place long enough to get that set down in there this has to tilt this end in actually first to get it in so it's going to be a little bit of a challenge There's that, followed by a little retaining. You can see where the bearings were running on this outside. Actually, this side here it was running on. And that is gonna sit down right there like that. And then, this washer, well, that's all, I'm not gonna put that on yet. Gotta flip this upside down now and do the other side. And already, there we go. And I beveled this end a little bit because that's the end I gotta knock. Actually, I think I might have put it in backwards. That's gonna make it challenging to knock it through. I gotta get a little more grease. I think I did put that in. Yeah, I did. Well, it's gonna make it more challenging to get that rod driven out the other side because now I don't have a beveled edge on it. And I don't really feel like taking it out and turning it around and redoing all this. But you know how that goes. That'll probably turn around and bite me in the rear end and have to take it out anyway, the whole thing out to get it flipped. But. We'll just roll with it. And then if I take it out, turn it around and make it work right, and I guess I get laughed at and some bad comments in the comment section, huh? All right. So, now I gotta get this into that. All right, now for the fun, I gotta stick this in there without it falling out. Surely it ain't gonna be that easy. Then I got a thrush washer. This is the fun part here. Put a little grease on that. This is just to try to get it to stick. That's all that's for. Somehow I gotta get in there and get it lined up. There's one on the front, and I gotta pick this up yet, so it ain't gonna be too bad, I don't think. I gotta put the front shaft in, and then I gotta kinda lift this up to meet the gears on it. I know, plenty of comments about installing the bearing. I know, they're coming. It is seated in there all the way. Now the fun spot is I also got to line that up in there. If I can get that to stay there. Now I got to move his gear set up. I got two more in the back. 
the steel one's going to go against the gear set. And this one will go against the casing. It's the more wear. But you can, you can see where this is uh, kind of worn in there a little bit. But it's the steel will go against the gears. And this one here up against the case. So now I'm going to have to line this all up. A little grease to hold this. Now, this is going to be the tricky part. I got to line everything up. Ain't playing nicely. It is not playing nicely. You know, this case is kind of cold. It's cold out. It's only like 30 some degrees. It was 70 some the other day. It tends to. There we go. I think we're getting closer. I think we're getting closer. Maybe. Hopefully. See if I can get it. There's a large gear. That first gear's down there, and that's what's blocking it. I can't can't seem to get it at all. I was hoping maybe I could rotate it up. Maybe if I can get lucky enough now. Oh yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, I'm gonna have to keep my finger in there. Keep that. I got that wood dowel pushed forward just into the casing to hold that in place. All right, so now that I got that started, I'm sliding in. I want to slide in the rear shaft right here into the casing, and that's going to push that wood dowel out at the front, right up over here. I stopped knocking things over. All right, so just keep an eye right here. And that's gonna push that wood down.
too far. tap. I think that might do it right there. They're locking in. That just peeled just a little tiny bit up there. That's no big deal. I'm not worried about that. The shaft is seated properly. It's flush on the other end. So we're good with that. All right. So I got the needle bearings creased up inside the uh, shaft in there. And that is actually lubricated with oil, not grease. So I just used a very light grease Vaseline, as a matter of fact, to hold them in spot while I get this shaft in. Um, I don't want to use a high temp grease, something like that, because I'll, I'll show you later on the outside, but the oil actually flows out and in through here and oils these barons and then back. But... For now, let me try to get the shaft in. I expect this to be a little challenging and hopefully I will be able to get that on, on video. So that's reverse, your reverse gear. That's neutral. I'll push that out. And that's either first or second. And then it'll slide up there. All right, so that's third. That was a little bit of a bear getting back in there. I ain't gonna lie to you. Now she wants to be a little top heavy. Get my four by four. Cause I don't want to drop it again, that's for sure. All right. So finally, that's in. There's reverse. I ain't even sure what we're in now. First, second, and third. And I'm not sure why that's locking up. I think I'm just in between two gears is why it's not all the way forward. I think that's all that is. I'll get the top plate on and then we'll uh, do it again and we'll know for sure if I got a problem in there or not. I don't think I do, but uh, no guarantees. All right, let's button the rest of it up. All right, so now I'm just gonna take the top and uh, line it up. It's easy, just line right up in there. Just gotta put it in on an angle a little bit to get it to fit in the housing. Line her up. Hopefully my bolts will keep my gasket straight. 
do I have in? There we go. Let's see if I got her. Yeah, there we go. That should do her. And uh, just gonna go ahead and bolt it down. So now, that's reverse, or I'm sorry, that is in neutral, like I said. So if I push this up, that'll move that over. One way should be reverse, and the other way, so that's gonna be first gear, and I think the other way should be reverse. Yeah, good. I don't know if you're on camera, if you're watching that, it's turning backwards. Bring it back to the center, let that go. One should be forward, or, um, well, forward third, and the other should be second. So that's going to be second. That one's third. Great. So all I'm going to do is just go ahead and tighten these down. And uh, I just got a nose cone to put here on the front. I don't think I'm going to bother worry about uh, showing that, putting that on. It's simple. Um, you know what I will tell you something real quick when I mentioned earlier about the bearings uh, being oiled you have a little port here and then I don't know if you see it on camera right here is an oil port so that will line up and that's actually how these bearings and everything are oiled but so all I'm gonna do is just gotta take a gasket bolt that down good to go so I'm gonna uh, leave this video here um, Again the engine whenever that comes back and I'll probably Once that comes back, I'll probably go ahead and paint this up paint the engine up. It's all like a, a grayish color um, Not going to worry too much about making it exact factory colors. It's not the intent of this. It is a backyard build um, Do the best you can do and that's all you do but uh, Just want to say yeah uh, Thanks for watching and uh, subscribe. Next, I think I want to start uh, getting the body panels off, get the cab off, strip it down to the frame, um, and then start doing the frame while we're waiting on the engine to come back. Weather is getting nicer, so I think that'll be uh, the next step. All right. Thanks, guys.